Let me piggyback off what CT said. Somebody said, this nigga Batman be folding people up like pretzels inside of a, a shopping cart and be like, talk. <laughs> <laughs> like this, like, <laughs> now talk. Say something. Say something. My esophagus is broke. I can't talk wow. anymore because you punched me too hard. <laughs> Man, you come straight out of a cup. Bro, Bruce Wayne, <laughs> Bruce Wayne showed up to the Iceberg Lounge, and this motherfucker had the bangs. I said, "Come on, man, at least, <laughs> at least do that one time with the hair, bro." What are we doing right now? Hey, man, hey, 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 hey. If y'all don't say that about Toby, you don't say nothing about Robert Pattinson. Yo, to- don't even get me started on Spider Man Three. Spider Man Three was the worst Spider Man movie of all time. You're, you, uh, you're that dance is the best. Yes. Bro, the fact that he went to the Iceberg Lounge three times in three different... <laughs> like, like, he went as he went as Batman. Twice. Some twins up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he went as, like... Like, fam, like, I've, I know those twins was like, fam, I'm going to quit, man. I'm not going to work the door no more. Why are they going to work the door? Why, have, why did they get fired? Like, Had hey, to. uh... You had niggas just walk up in here, you don't have to replace you with somebody else. With, he with showed Batman. up three times with the exact same energy, just looking different. They didn't realize that this thing was Batman. Right. They like that you though. I will say that was another good thing about this uh movie was that I did love that they gave the henchman personality, and that's something we always saw mm. in the cartoon. Like you always did like the uh, the the uniqueness of everybody being a henchman, like the mm. iceberg lounge henchman, Joker's henchman. Like you really got to see that with this. It's just like I like this. I like this, okay. and then too, like kind of the mobs thing, like the twins, and then like I, I would love to see like some more of the henchmen and stuff like that. Got kind of like different type of code names and stuff. It remind me of the Arkham series. Remember when yeah. when, you, when you flying around the city or going around mm-hmm. the city in Arkham, you hearing henchmen talk and they just saying the most random stuff like, "Hey, you know that I heard Penguin was out." Like, like it reminded me of that because that that's what brings Arkham to life. Mm-hmm. Hearing what they are dealing with and how they, you know, like I said, one of the, my favorite Arkham bits, like um, whoever the the thug is in the city when he was like. I mean, who 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 crew you gonna be with? He was like, man. I mean, I want to be with Joker because Joker crazy. So I guess I'm gonna go with Two Face. Like it's like having that. Like, fam, you literally jumping crew to crew and yep. you just doing one crazy with another crazy. So mm-hmm. like, yeah, I love that they gave the goons their like some personality to it. Like it really helped. Here's the thing: them. if you gonna be a henchman, if I'm a henchman, I'm only gonna work for Penguin or Two Face or Scarecrow because they're not killing their people and they're not gonna die. But if you are a Joker henchman. Or a uh, yeah, if you're a Joker, yeah. you're gonna die because he's gonna <laughs> just randomly shoot you in the face. Yeah, yeah. you know what I love about video game uh, goons is that they're, they're, like you saying the little the little talks and you hear some like I'm like what was that? Must have been the wind. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's like, dude, investigate. This is what we hired you. <laughs> being, a, being a goon in Gotham got to be super stressful because. Especially after Batman's already been operating, at any sound I'm thinking is Batman. I don't like at <laughs> yeah. any sound. I'm like, oh shit! Hey, we, we might he's as well here. hang it up, dog. He here. I'm dog. immediately. <laughs> hey, boss, he's here. He here, cause like, <laughs> but, but also too, you gotta still be tough. Like, remember, you still gotta like bully the citizens of Gotham. So you gotta mm-hmm. still be like, hey man, give me your money. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, yeah, give me your. Oh, he ran off. Dang it! Dang it! I think I'm that's my problem. I've never seen a successful goon, and they no. always getting handled. I've never seen like, hey, he's pretty good. You should definitely hire him. You fuck Use him people. again. No, no, we 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 had we had one, and I'll never forget it. It was on the the Batman animated series, mm-hmm. and I'll never forget it was an episode where a henchman killed Batman. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was. And yeah, I remember it was. That. Remember yeah, Joker was. Joker was upset, and he wanted to find the henchman. Yeah, he was, and kill him. Yeah, like, he was, he like, was like, "Yo, where are you?" He was so hot, body. He was like, "What?" He was like, and he went <laughs> looking. Joker went had a hit out on everything. Yeah. He wanted this dude, but come yeah. to find out, Batman wasn't dead. He played that yeah. so he could lure the Joker out uh, and get him. But uh, everybody kept looking at this dude like, "Yo, you the dude that killed yeah. Batman," <laughs> and he was just a henchman. But it yeah. showed like what that. What that could do to you being an henchman, like, because everybody started hating him. It's like, 
this dude yo, killed Batman? If you can Google that episode season and number, tell me and I'll watch it today. Oh yeah, do do so on it right now. It's on the, the ninety series, yeah. right? Yeah, it was on the ninety yeah. series. Now, now, now that yeah. you bring it back, I do remember it. Like yeah, you did I'm, what? Yep, you did that's what? Yeah, Joker was pissed. Yep, that and he was so mad by it. He was so mad by it. So it's like, yo, you might get some of those elements in the new story too. Oh, so shit. it's just like. It's, it's actually called The Man Who Killed Batman. It's the 51st episode on the Batman animated series. So, 51st episode. Yep. With, yeah. Okay. The cool. Man, that, look the man that Killed Batman. That's the name. That's the title of it. Done yep. deal. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> I oh yeah. That, that, that episode was hilarious. Like I said, but it, it, again, that's why I always say why I love the Joker in general, because I was like, he is pure chaos. He really doesn't have any mission but to show Batman that we are alike. So the fact that somebody else killed Batman pissed him off. Like, bro, like, like, like you really see that relationship. Like, Joker doesn't want to kill Batman. He mm-hmm. just wants to terrorize him until he realized that they're insane. Like, that's his goal. So, like, there's no killing of the Batman. And the, so he was pissed off at old boy. Here's my you know, question. Such about, <clears throat> such Go about ahead. Hollywood and WB is... If they don't reach their 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 financial goal, all this is gone. Yeah, none of this matters. No. Yeah. Uh, or if it do really successful, somebody else is like, hey, I think you guys should uh, introduce uh, Poison Ivory in the next sequel. It's like I didn't have that planned out. I didn't even set her up. Yeah, here here's the money for you yeah. to figure this out. And it's like now your whole universe has been shifted because it's like I didn't even set that up for her. Here yeah. and that's exactly what happened with Spider Man Three. Raimi wanted to do Sandman and the studio wanted Venom and we all wanted Venom. We didn't want Sandman. And then he was like, I don't really know anything about Venom, but fuck it, let me give the studio what they want and bomb. So when you look at Warner Brothers, they do that more often. And it's unfortunate that we've we've seen, let's see, Keaton, I'm not counting West, but we obviously know uh, Adam West is legendary. Yeah. Keaton, Clooney, Val Kilmer, Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, now Robert Pattinson. There's no reason we should have seen six Batman in our lifetime, with the exception of Kevin Conroy, that's seven, um, and not have seen any incarnation in the films of a Blue Beetle or a Mr. Terrific or a Arrow on movie screens instead of yeah. TV. Like, they keep rebooting Batman because they know it's the financial winner, but they have so many other stories that can make them billions of dollars. I mean, there's so many cool stories outside of that. Because again, too, like if you want to tell Batman, tell it from a different side. Like again, too, like you said, why don't you do a Joker series mm-hmm. and just put, like you know, just to say and to spin it off of that of like I'm showing y'all we the same person. <laughs> we terrorize the crap out of this city. That's yeah. my job. Or it's just like yo, like how you said. There's so many other ones that can be brought up to there that you want to see. Like I would have loved to see the Green Arrow movie just for the simple fact off of his city and what he's done. Yeah, I like I like the Flash, but give me a real Flash movie. Don't yeah. give me part of that. Same thing with like Blue Beetle. It's like yo, if you're gonna give me their stories, give me their real dope story because they have a lot of dope solo stories that y'all don't give us, and then don't water them down, kind of like how you did Shazam. Like Shazam's story is actually very dope, but you make it so funny that people can't respect it. And it's just like, yo, Shazam, like like the Kingdom Come series, I'm waiting for them to try to somewhat establish that to have that. But that's, you know, they haven't given us Lex Luthor yet. Mm -hmm. And they keep trying to push all of these things that's these major cats. That's why even Matt Reeves said no to them putting Superman in the second one. He was like, I have no plans of putting Superman in this universe. That's not what this is for. Right. Yeah. I mean, one of the one like when you think about like just doing like an off series that leads into something big and starting off in, a, in, a, in an unconventional t- um, place, you know, even when you think about Lex Luthor showing his rise to power, like that can be like you know, it's stuff like that. But like you said, <laughs> they don't want to take those liberties. They want to go for the quick cash grab. I'm hoping with them seeing how this video was shot. I mean, not video. How this movie was shot and you know, the the characters that he chose to use for villains and just to, to create the world of Gotham, hopefully they put that trust in him. Like, okay, you know what? Let, let's give him the money, but let's not step on his creative vision. Let's see mm-hmm. where he takes this. Because, that, you know, I, I was, my, my hot take that I've been telling everybody, I said, whatever category that you put Logan and Joker in, 
yeah, this yeah. movie is in that category with them as far as like artistic as far as themes like i that's how that's what i took from this movie um with the batman it was like it was very it was shot in a artistic manner not just a superhero action manner and i think that mm-hmm. that's why i love it because i love logan and i love joker and i this movie i love it as well in that sense i don't know what category they call that because it's not necessarily a superhero movie but it is still because of who the character but it, it, it would be like a fan it's like a fantasy like realism because like you said yeah. like for those three movies it's not about the superhero like batman is a great noir style detective film Yes, it it's is. just the fact this detective dresses like a bat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Joker is a tale of a man who has a psychotic break after being shitted on for so much yeah. that he becomes the laughing stock, and that's the joke to him. It just happens to be he dresses like a clown when he does it. And it's portrayed from these places. Same thing with Logan. Logan is a broken down version of this hero that people display him to be because they were actually the first ones that linked the comics into the actual movie to say like, yo, this is fake. This is not what you think is going on. And to be this old person that you see is worn down from being what is called a hero, it takes away that element of what the, of the whole comic book stands. It made them mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it'd be a dope ass angle. Now I'm saying this with my Kanye West voice. This would be game changing for WB. <laughs> what would it be, Kanye? It'd be one for Warner Brothers. If they had focused on all the villains mm-hmm. and made stories for them only, so we get mm-hmm. to know them and the USC is only the POV of the villains mm-hmm. and, and understand like from Joker and understand why they're doing this. And, and we are falling in love with them. And now you're seeing glimpse of Batman coming in, like, who is this? And like, you see them coming in and then they're, they're successful with their, their mission, but we, we just see Batman, it, who is that? Like, oh, you only see them. Like if it had a story of Clayface, a story of I, uh, Mr. Freeze, like, 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 those will be their heroes, but you'll see the, the heroes trying to come in. They win some, they lose some. But it's like, now it's like, we really rooting for the bad guys. Kind of yeah. like Suicide, yeah. Suicide Squad. They, no, these niggas are villains. Oh, but yeah. if, if, if we had like a whole universe of villains and you see, because no one really cares about Batman that much. They care about the villains. Yeah. No, no that's not true. That's, 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 that's not true at all. No, uh, I mean, I mean, I mean the way that the way no, the way the way coming in, the way it's growing now. Yeah, yeah, the way it's growing now, though, it's like you're start you're starting to believe more too of like how the cops see Batman. Like it's a psychopath dressed as a bat running around the city <laughs> beating people up, and you start to kind of understand that a little bit. And you'd be like, "Well, I just do this crazy." I, was, I like I, it. At the beginning of the movie, I was on the side of the commissioner, and I was like. So they just let Batman in the crime scene? They just, they just <laughs> let him in the crime scene all willy-nilly like that? Like, like I well, here's it. the thing. When you look at, first, I, I hear your motivation, beyond, but the villains, this is why you're wrong. Okay. When you look at Suicide Squad, the first movie, not the second one, when you look at Suicide Squad movie, that's what they were thinking. Oh, let's just give the villains. And then, but the problem with that is you can't introduce... Exactly. You can't introduce these villains being in prison and we need them for a mission if you haven't even introduced their counterparts or where they uh, are, how they got put in here. Like, if these well, guys well, super well, villains, well, if the, well, the thing is, they they kind of disproved that, though, with the second film, because that's what the Suicide Squad kind of was. It was like if they'd have focused on it being the Suicide Squad rather than the particular people. Mm-hmm. It would have hit better because now for the, the re like sort of like the sequel reboot, we focused on okay, this is a task force that does suicide missions and it's villains, and this is how you get your time off. And so what that did was it made you start to attach to other people who might not get a chance, like Peacemaker. I'd have yes. never thought Peacemaker got a, would get a show, but the fact that I didn't need to see his backstory yet to be introduced to him. So it's those type of movies that could give us that. But again, too, it has to focus on 
the whole thing rather than it did with the previous Suicide Squad, trying to focus on the big stars of Will Smith. Uh, Mark and you know Robbie why? So. You know why the second one succeeded to your point, Will, compared to the first one? It, well, the first one made money, but it wasn't successful. Yeah. The second one was successful because of what you just said. We're f- these villains. I mean, these criminals are in this prison for whatever crime. We did not show which superhero arrested them, but these these villains are so no name that you just have to take their character for what we're saying compared to the first one where it was like all right cool we got captain boomerang who we know is a flash rogues gallery we got uh harley quinn jokers in this movie we got all these big star villain names not even mentioning their a-list actor counterpart but we got these big villain names and they are in this prison we're like hold on how can you have these characters in prison and you haven't even shown us them fighting their main hero villain? You get what I'm saying? Compared to the second one where it was like, all right, cool. This chick is in here because she can control rats and this bitch is in prison. All right, bet. We need her for the Suicide Squad mission. Now I'm invested. And now these characters are so no name, I have no choice but to go with the story. I hear you, you, CT. Um, Yes. Um, I'm talking about more like Joker, though. As in, like, oh, understand Simo. how yeah. he got there. Now we're sympathetic, yeah. and now and now if if he if Joker does something crazy, now we're like, okay, I get it. Now you're trying to make people understand why you're crazy or or, or why you should be more mental. I mean, uh, be, be more conscious of mental health. But doing that, he does something crazy. Now Batman comes in, puts him in jail, but it's like we you got to get back out, man. You, we got to get him back out. Yeah, because there there was a. There was a method to his madness at, right. at, at some point. Yeah. And I and I said feel that too. And that's why I even too like agree, agreeing with you and agreeing with Deuce, like we should be able to see it from their side because it also can do something to where you can kind of understand the hero's point now. So just like how you said from a Joker standpoint of why we now understand why he do it, we can also understand something that could lead us more to Superman if they made a series uh that centered around the Luthers. So before yeah. Superman gets there, where we see Lex with his father, with his mother, with his sister, and how they are in LexCorp, because again, you still have Argus, you still have the uh, the, the alien uh, uh, hours, the DO, the DO uh, C that's mm-hmm. there too. And who's to say that wasn't around during the time his father was there? And then to see Lex growing up around that, and then how he becomes that, and then takes over LexCorp. So it's like you have that, but then too, we start to learn his mental lesson why he's so in fear of aliens. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Too, yeah. Like, yeah, you start to go like, bro, you just kind of tripping, but also yeah. too, it makes me pumped to see Superman I more. I love that. I love that. Imagine if we took out the Black Panther story and we just focused on Killmonger. We'll be all the way invested. I'm like, yeah. ooh, we were already said, invested what? in that. We were already there. Yeah. Right, right, right. What, but yeah, imagine now. If we had just just like seventy five percent was Killmonger, and it was like now we like dang this this family is trash. Mm-hmm. We don't even see Black Panthers. But that's the thing, Dion. Like even to what you're saying, Killmonger. Okay, first of all, shout out massive shout out to everybody involved in a Black Panther film. Yeah, but when you look at that movie. Uh, Kugler was the first person to make a DC film in the Marvel Universe because (laughs) Killmonger was the hero of that story. They showed us from beginning to end why he's the hero. That that debate was basically Martin Luther King versus Malcolm X. And when you look at Black Panther as a character, Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace. I was rooting for Killmonger as much as the rest of the world because Killmonger won that fight fair and square black panther <laughs> did Jeez. not win that fight bro he yeah, literally yeah. saying nobody yielded like nigga i yeah. killed you if they wouldn't have recovered your body and put you in the snow I ain't with that shit no more man <laughs> you, you know what i'm saying you had to get the flower your mother had to sneak in a flower yeah, for you yeah. to take the drink of it to right. beat me that's not fair bro yeah. so kill right. is the rightful king of wakanda that's facts, though. That's facts, too. I watched the movie three times. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yo, that's true. Like, hey, I beat you, I beat you in hand-to-hand combat regularly. Fair to square, bro. Now, now granted, he did, he, I did he not yield. Conquer. Like, nigga, you were dead. You were dead. I, yo, yo, the yield, it will throw you off the, the cliff. That Damn. was the yield. <laughs> <laughs> that was you yielding. That's, that's <laughs> you you surviving oh, was me you. giving you mercy. Thank you, CT. I didn't think about that. Telling you. He won. 
<laughs> that was from the flowers? Yeah, so that so so then too it's just like so how come everybody ain't in jail? So I, I like so old boy that had the right on from get out, he get locked up with everybody else. And then let's also think about what's old girl who plays the, the leader, the uh ball headed one? Okoye. Yeah. For for my city Wakanda and its king. You trade on your king real quick. Real quick. That's <laughs> tyranny. <laughs> Wakanda without question. But I got a question. Yeah, but I got a question. But I got a question. <laughs> that has to be the sequel, this. man. That has to be a sequel. Yeah, it gotta, gotta be. That gotta be. Yeah, and it gotta be like a riff. It gotta be a riff between it because we do remember there were some people that agreed with Killmonger in their stand. So there has to be some ramification of that happening. I am afraid, bro, because I know in the comic books it's supposed to be uh, what's his little sister's name? Shuri. 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 I know it's supposed to be Shuri, but ah, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. I want to see T'Challa be if okay. Uh, Kevin Feige said T'Challa will not be cast recast in the six one six universe. However, I want to see Killmonger be reinstated as Black Panther, bro. Well, well, uh, we all we did hear that uh, supposedly that he is supposed to make a cameo in Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. Ooh. So which comes two, out before Black Panther two. Exactly. And then also, too, we've seen What If, and they've already said that Sam Raimi is putting a lot of his material from that What If series. So we, we, see, the, we see the animated world in that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So also so with that, so we also might have two things happen. We also we may see uh, the Guardians of the Multiverse. So where we see that Killmonger story play out where he get this, uh, the vibranium and the uh, um the uh, what are the infinity stones but the more realistic one i'm thinking is i'm thinking he's going to be black panther who's a part of the illuminati i think he's going to be that know. version from another earth oh, i've been thinking that too the yeah. what is the illuminati version so the uh so that's the one that black the one that has black panther in it. so black panther uh basically he declined joining and then he uh, eventually joined uh the illuminati to stop uh one of the things they had going on but there's a seat oh there's a seat there yeah. in the in the trailer if you uh, and i know you don't watch trailers, so i don't want to give away but there's a seat there that's out there um they keep trying they uh count them wrong they keep forgetting the space that's in there that's for and i'm not gonna say it because i know you haven't seen it but you the two of you uh do to be on you know who's supposed to go in the middle and who oh, they yeah, show yeah, yeah. yeah in that far left mm. i saw someone sitting there and it did symbol a, a shimmer of gold yeah, and I, so I was like, "Yo, that might be Killmonger as Black Panther in another universe." Hmm. When does Doctor Strange come out again? Uh, May six. All right. Yeah, right before that's my birthday weekend. Okay, hey, cool. Hey. Uh, okay. Good. If if you guys were had full creative control, well, yeah. I want to hear all y'all's all y'all perspective. How would you respectfully, organically? Fix the the Black Panther replacement, or because they, they don't have any footage of him. So, how would you fix this? What do you mean? As in, like, we got to move forward with with the title Black Panther. How would you with the storyline we have? How would you minute one? We're gonna is he in full mass? This is how I'm, this is me freestyling. This is how they're gonna do it. They're gonna open up on the mission. He in full mass. They can find somebody to do a voiceover of him, and he's he's doing a mission or something. And it's like, uh, I, you know, show him from the back a couple of times when you take his mask off um, and getting captured. Um, they strip him from his powers. And then it's like, we got to figure out how the way to get him. And then it's like, yo, they killed him. They killed T'Challa. Oh my God, we need the king. And they find a replacement from there. This is how I'm, I'm thinking how they're going to replace him respectfully. Okay. Here's how. I uh, I got a theory because I've been talking. So here's how here's how I think is actually how it's going to happen. Um, kind of similar to what you said, like they have it in full mass and everything. I think because of the untimely death of Chadwick Boseman, they're not going to kill T'Challa on screen. Now I do believe since they're opening up to the multiverse and everything, he's going to get lost in the multiverse in some way, shape, or form, and that's how they're going to bring in um, Killmonger's one. Because they, 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 again, they do need somebody to fill that king spot. And being that they're diving into the multiverse and everything like that, they're going, they're going to be able to pull Michael B. Jordan's 
Killmonger, and it's because it's pretty much just going to be the alternate version of Killmonger, but he is now pulling him into this universe because that's the one thing that I guess we that they haven't addressed yet or we haven't seen, but bringing somebody from a different universe into this universe and keeping them in this universe. I believe that this is going to be the first character that they bring in this universe and keep in this universe, and that's how they're going to continue to go with. What if he knew Peter Parker? He got sucked into that. <laughs> Go ahead, Will. <laughs> that well, not, but that also somewhat could possibly tie into there. So it, it kind of goes to to like what Deuce was saying. Like how I was talking about was y'all go like I would say kind of go past him a couple of years, like catch us up after Hawkeye. So it's been a couple of like maybe a few years or a few months or something like that, but we are already established his passing. Like I'm thinking of like there's a statue in his name in Wakanda and stuff oh. like that, and they're trying to figure it out. Now, to replace him, it could either be Killmonger, but I'm also shooting for a recast of somebody new. This could go to the same thing of with the multiverse. It's a T'Challa whose Earth is no longer here. Like, mm. due to the fact that a multiverse war is starting, we don't know which ones that they've already been destroyed or not. So in his world, this one could be he was the um, American version that left Wakanda to go get a Western education. And of course, that's the one that had the rift between him and his dad, and he didn't go back until his dad was killed. And then that's when he went to Wakanda. But then also, too, it could be in that version when the Chitauri attacked that they didn't survive and they wound up blowing up the planet. And before that happened, like you said, how he's pulled out of there could, that's how we figured that out. But then he's put on their earth. And since they don't have a T'Challa, he doesn't have a home to go to. They were let him remain there. And then too, like that could lead into the third one where it does kind of start to get a little uncomfortable because now you have him trying to figure out like, you're my sister, but you're not my sister. Because again, like we have variants, so he could still have her as that in his universe, but it's like, yo, I watched you die. Yeah. I watched you pass. I watched Ooh. all of you die. Ooh, I got chill bumps. Yeah, and it's just like, I have to deal with that now. And then too, like, who was his killmonger to him? Mm. I'm going to say I would love this is the most simplistic because what I've learned about Kevin Feige is nothing is ever as we complex it to be. So I'm going to say the most simple solution being we show the funeral, the movie opens up on a funeral of oh, T'Challa and then we show Killmonger being released, like coming out in chains to see his cousin's funeral or to, you know, honor his memory and him, him, him having a conversation with Shuri, like who's taking the mantle, and then oh, she's yeah. like, you know, I'm taking the axe ASAP. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then it goes from there. But I don't yeah. think, I hope they wouldn't cheapen it by showing him behind the head when we already like. I don't want them to pull the Fast and Furious with Paul Walker type yeah. thing, where we all, as the world, know that this man has died, and you're playing the whole he's alive. But I do love. One of you guys said uh, he gets sucked into the multiverse and like he's lost in it. I'm not mad at that because at least that allows uh, somebody else to take the place. But man, I just don't know. But I know Kevin Feige is way more simple than all of us. Yeah, because it, it, to me, when I realized that was WandaVision, I said we put so much stock into this being like, oh, look, we we get we got this Quicksilver, and he was like, right. Like we 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 thought this was it. Like oh, mutants is nah. here, X Men. Mutants here, man. He just recast <laughs> us. Like nah, I just showed y'all the actor. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, then too another thing that you that that you like to say it might be simple that they throw in um to replace that he could be a scroll. Who could be a scroll? Black Panther. The new oh, one or man. the child? No, that entire. Because think about it. What if he never came back? I wouldn't like that. If, if he, All if the he, way from Endgame. What if that was a scroll? Because we've known they've been here. And we know Fury know about it. So Endgame mm. was the last time we seen him. Yeah. Um, Endgame's the last time we seen him. So think about it. What if he was a scroll that entire time? But that means... Okay. For, okay. I'm with you. But that that doesn't come out. We don't <laughs> even know what Secret Wars is yet. Man, we've seen scrolls since Captain. Yes, Marvel. but what I'm saying is, when you do Secret Wars, that's when they reveal everybody who's been yeah. scrolls. So, without Secret Wars, 
I can't, I refuse to put all of that into this Doctor Strange movie because he has so much heavy lifting. Man, he yeah, got yeah, more yeah, heavy he lifting than the Spider Man movie. So yeah, I doubt did. that they will put everything in there when he still has to tell his own story and have his fucking fight with Benedict coming. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so, for. yeah, yeah, and so and himself and He's himself, there. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Because I watched What If. After we were forced that uh, Doctor Strange trailer at the end of Spider Man, they caught me off guard by watching the trailer. But yeah. I watched What If just to be able to make sense of everything. And I just feel like Doctor Strange still has his own story. I caught a glimpse. I don't want y'all to even say anything. I caught a glimpse into, I was watching TV and it popped up. Uh, I think they showed Sir Patrick Stewart. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Oh my God, I gotta turn this off. That, no, that's what we that's what we passed up. Because when we were talking about the space, like that's yeah, we what didn't I want to I didn't want to give it away to you. I appreciate you. it, but I'm just saying yeah. I saw that and I was like, I turned it off immediately because I don't even know yeah. where the conversation went. But they have so much heavy lifting to do with that movie. If they introduce some fucking X-Men and they introduce a multi, it's like this is too much. Yeah. It, it is, but but again, too, I didn't expect to see scrolls in one division. True. True, so that's true. the thing. So we don't know where that's what I'm saying. We don't know how this can get tied into. Like you say, I am too. I'm going off of the simplistic stuff, but yeah, we do gotta wrap this and stuff like that. And so of course we veer off from who we were supposed that's to be talking point. about. So we better hope we don't get caught in a dark alley for this. Uh, <laughs> the Batman. <laughs> <laughs> the Batman. <laughs> Wait, even specifically, even with the Batman, since we talk about multiverses and we know DC does the multiverse better than anybody, mm -hmm. the multiverse in this DC world, a problem that Warner Brothers is doing is they're throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks. Now, with that, we know that this Batman is in a completely different universe than what we've seen in the previous three years of DC films. So it's almost like, how would you even show that this is a different world because we know there's a different world from the Joker movie that just came out. Mm -hmm. So it's like, we're, we're comic book fans and we've been in this thing since we were kids. The average movie goer is not. So they don't understand why that Joker isn't in this movie instead of introducing a new Joker. And they don't understand why Wonder Woman wasn't in fucking Peacemaker and how Peacemaker even got a show. But I don't want to see all of the villains become heroes. I gave it a pass with Peacemaker, but I don't want to see that shit with every villain story they do. And I fear that for the Penguin movie. I mean, a TV show. Well, no, what I think, I think to realize is yeah. these are comic book movies and there's different comic book universes. Several people got killed, several different versions, Frank Miller's. It's like so many different versions of a comic book. And I think they trying to adapt that. These are different volumes of, of Batman and you know different volumes of these characters. So hopefully they can explain it somehow or, or they do the little Flashpoint thing and try to tie everybody together. Try to but that's it. a problem too, because Flashpoint yeah, got pushed back. So it's like, did they get pushed back because they're shooting more? Or did they get pushed back because this Batman movie is obviously a success? So it's like, what are what's the reason for pushing the shit I, back? I think they pushed it back for that. Because here's the thing where, where you can say is link the cop-out, and this is what I believe that they're possibly going to try to do. The cop-out is to just have somebody from that universe pop up in Flashpoint. They don't gotta be pivotal to the story. It doesn't have to, it can be just something to quit. Like you see that universe and that lets you know, okay, there's a whole nother universe and Flashpoint, you know, like you said, the crisis across infinite worlds, to me, I thought like as much, as much flack as Arrowverse gets, the crisis across infinite worlds was done amazingly. Because mm -hmm. they so that was a hardest one. That was the yeah, best one. Yeah, and they, and and again, it was just like little small glimpse, like oh snap, yo, that's that's the Flash from the movie. Oh shit, that's that's from the from the from the eight. Who oh, he's from Lois and Clark. Like it was just like those moments, right? So I feel like that would be the easiest way, and that would probably be the cop out, and that's probably what they're doing. They're probably pushing it back, saying, "What can we just get a scene in to incorporate this and just say, hey, this we acknowledge this universe exists." And I think that that's probably why I got pushed back. Also but too, like, okay. Go ahead. I think I think though it's also it's also but also too it may be something a little bit more added to it because remember we still have the Blue Beetle uh uh series the movie coming we still have Batgirl and uh, and the Batwoman thing coming out so it also may be getting ready to push that out to establish them as well and then too 
Uh, there's also the talk about you know the black super uh, the black Superman uh, coming out onto HBO. So it's just like really. Where too- the fuck is the Green Lantern Corps? We've been <laughs> promised that. Shit. Right, we've been <laughs> promising that. Now they, apparently it's a movie now. Apparently they turn it into Jesus. a movie. Oh my but, god! But I think but I think so too. I think that's the reason of like why Flashpoint is. I, I, and again, like you said, like you got to think about Kevin Feige's standpoint, but then also to think about how DC's doing things. We don't necessarily know where Flashpoint is going. Because mm-hmm. of the fact that even Superwoman is in this. And so it's like, why is Superwoman a part of this? Yeah. Why is Michael Keaton's Batman a part of this? And, you know, like I've seen the new version of him in this Gotham. So I'm also kind of uh, curious to see how they make his Gotham nowadays uh, for this, too. Because I think I saw an image of him where he was just out as Bruce Wayne. And it looked pretty, like, dark and sinister, too. So it looks Maybe like he's going to be uh, uh, Bruce Wayne's dad, the one who didn't get killed, that was shooting people. Well, no, he's he's his Batman. Oh, he's That's thing. Yeah, he's his Burton. Batman he's from the Tim Burton series. Like they have him like with the updated suit and the yellow uh, emblem on it and everything. Yeah, and yeah. If, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, they have his Batmobile in there too. Yeah, his Batmobile is in there. And this is what's so dope. I love to hear this because obviously Michael Keaton is my number one Batman. But that means that this Batman has been doing this shit for 30 yeah. years. <laughs> We're going to get old man Batman. We're going to get you old, grumpy ass Batman from Batman He's Beyond. He's been doing this shit because we saw a young Batman. <laughs> yep. Now this motherfucker is the seasoned <laughs> of the seasonist. Nigga. Yeah. I want to see so, all that shit. You got to have a rugged a beard. You got to have a cane. Oh yeah. So I de- so I definitely think though I I feel like they may push somewhat of a crisis on Infinite Earth into this flashpoint. Like I think they're going to destroy a couple of these lines that we do know so that we have that one singular timeline that this is our Batman, this is our Flash, this is our Aquaman, this is our Cyborg and leading on to the next to the next set of them because it is kind of like again, we have basically six bat. If you're going from Keaton, we now have seven pot- uh, potential Batman appearances yeah, yeah. we can have. But not only that, we also have now what four Catwoman appearances we can have. We now have. <laughs> did y'all include the Gotham series because that's had a Batman? Fuck out of here! <laughs> Fuck out of here! <laughs> you no, know well, no, no, no. Here's here's the thing. You, you kind of got you got right? you got to now with Crisis on Infinite Earths because yeah, the CW it. included DC Titans in their stuff when they showed that glimpse of of uh, Hawk and uh, Robin when the uh, when the timeline was, got destroyed. That's a uh, a Berlanti show compared to them showing Gotham on <laughs> what I think that was a uh, I don't know I think that was a Berlanti show too. Gotham was a Berlanti show, I think. But it, but it's just to say it's a it's a lot to I think both both DC and Marvel are trying to clean up their past of what they've had so scattered around and so it's just gonna be very interesting to see who's gonna come out on top like who is gonna be our Batman leading on who's gonna be our Joker who's gonna be our Superman like how do you plan to set this universe for us moving forward. Like we understand yeah. y'all have y'all have tried to do it like this, you tried to do it like that, but you've given us all the elements to say, okay, take all this and piece it together for us. Give us, give us something where we know this is coming, this is coming, and this is what we got to look forward to. And then what is your big end goal? Because I feel like one of the big things they should get to is the Kingdom Come series. If you can get to the Kingdom Come series, that should be your last fight. Like, not final, final, but it's like, that should be the big daddy. After that, then go start focusing on the B tertiary characters and stuff like that that you can do. Here's the problem. Rock with Pennyworth? Did y'all like that show? You fuck out of here, Deion. So here's the thing. When you look at... (laughs) Pennyworth. Y'all like... Y'all like... uh, I I thought thought it was cool. Uh, I thought it had potential. It wasn't like the, it didn't blow me away, but I was like, I got check two out the seasons. Season. I was like, I'm cool if three come and don't come. Listen, they so when you look at this, is what I mean by this: No Way Home and Doctor Strange are obviously one movie, but separately stories. Like this is this is the can of worms. This is us putting the genie back in the bottle. That's what Doctor Strange two is. Flashpoint is DC's final hope for fixing. <laughs> Nigga, you're, list, you're talking to a DC head. Oh, I'm talking you, about, I've been battling this you, since I was six. Yeah, This is the final <laughs> opportunity to fix the yeah. universe. So yeah. if they don't do a good job with this movie, it's 
a wrap because I'm jumping ship. If this Flashpoint yeah. movie no is not universe. where it needs to be, yeah. I'm going to Marvel and I'm going to wear a fucking shirt to commemorate it. So <laughs> well, the that difference- <laughs> to commemorate it. I love you as a friend, brother. <laughs> but I'm out. I'm, I'm not going to let you just blow past the word commemorate. <laughs> I said it perfectly. I, and I said it wrong. <laughs> I'm about to say, I think it's the other way around, bro. You said that. I was like, I was like, I don't know the real. She was so ready to hit you with that that uh, oh, verbal sword. Just listen, you- Will. This is what you don't know about me and Dion, bro. Dion Lack is the greatest of all time. He can never get me, and he tries so hard. <laughs> you turned the sword on yourself. He was waiting the whole episode. He's like, all right, I'm gonna catch you. Hey, before we leave though, we do so we we have to rank Batman movies. We have to at this point now. Okay, okay. All right, so we're 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 CT, what's your ranks? You are nobody right now. Val Val Kimmer, whichever one Val Kimmer is, is lowest. Oh, come on. Now here's the thing. In in order, Batman. I'm sorry. In order, Batman Returns, Batman, then I'm going The Dark Knight, then I'm going. Mm-hmm. It sucks because Ben Ben Affleck didn't get his own justice. But that's why oh. I can't have him in the list because he never had a solo film. Uh, yeah, and this is the only solo Batman, Batman film. Superman, his movie. Give that to him. Yeah, I was. I feel like that is his movie because okay. there was supposed to be technically a Man of Steel two, so mm-hmm. that technically is not the sequel to Superman. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what then. Batman Returns, Batman, The Dark Knight, Batman versus Superman. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to hit you with Batman Begins. Then I'm going to hit you with Batman Forever. Then I'm going to actually, it's Batman Forever, then Batman Begins, because I love Jim Carrey's performance. Then I'm going to go to The Dark Knight Rises after Batman and Robin, because that's how trash The Dark Knight Rises was to me. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell Batman you how- and Robin was better. <laughs> and that was some bullshit. Freddy Card Batman was better than Bane. Way nigga. better. Let me t- let me tell you how dope Bane is. This nigga said <laughs> he the, the lights when he said you we said you I nearly, you nearly adopted, 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 adopted this. Dark. I, I was born nigga, in it. He hit this nigga so hard the lights came back on. <laughs> 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 Oh wait, a- adjustment. I'm gonna go originally Batman and then Batman Returns because I love Batman Returns because it was true theater, like it felt like an art piece. But Batman won for the simple Joker scene where he played Prince. And then he did the, the parade. Yeah. That is yeah. so timeless to me. So yeah. for me, I'm going to go Batman. You know, Batman won. I'm actually going to put the Batman up there for me. Oh, um, oh you're a wild nigga. It just yeah. <laughs> I, I, bro, I, I genuinely love this movie, bro. Like, like I, 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 I held, this, uh, uh, held this up high. So wait, um, those, those, you mean to tell me when you was watching the Batman, I want the guys on the truth. When you watch the Batman movie, not one time during that movie did you go. So if you say no, you're a goddamn liar. I'm no, let me tell you. It. Let me tell. Let me tell you. And, and I, I've had this conversation since I watched the movie. Okay. My only moment of it, legit, was the Bruce Wayne portrayal. But right. I felt that his Batman was so good that it didn't even take me out of the movie. Usually I okay. would have an issue with that because, I, you know, but I was like, I thought his Batman was good. Like I said, I, and this was somebody who went in on the fence for this movie. Like, this is not going to be as what, what I think it is. Um, and like I said, I was genuinely, genuinely impressed by this. So I, like I said, I got Batman one. The Batman is my second one. Um, then I'm going to go The Dark Knight. Then I'm gonna go Batman Returns because I love Batman Returns. Then I'm gonna go Batman Begins. And then, wait, am I, what, what am I missing? I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, four more Batman. <laughs> That's what you missing? Oh, you missing a few Batman movies? Oh yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm uh, Batman. Batman. I know Batman Forever is the last one. For me. What? No wait. 
No, Batman and Robin is the oh, last one. There we one. go. Sorry about All that. Right. Batman and Robin is the last one because yeah, next is going to be Batman Forever. Um, and then, and then I'm gonna go Dark Knight Rises, and then Batman and Robin. Wait, over Batman and Superman, Dark Knight Rises goes over Batman. Oh, well, oh, oh, we're, we're including Batman. Out of Superman. control. Sorry about that. I missed that. Yeah. Batman and Superman, Dark Knight Rises, Batman and Robin. Man, it, that narcotic must be strong where you at in your city. Keep going, Will. <laughs> oh, well, you you finna ask me what I'm smoking on because you definitely not gonna like this list. Uh, first, first number one was the Dark Knight. Dark Knight was, okay. was quite simply the best one. Joker just was flawless. Number two for me is Batman Returns. Uh, okay. definitely up there. Number three, I would have to say it's probably Batman. Like I like the first Batman, but the second one just it's something about it that get me with all the characters, like you said, the mm-hmm. settings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, the next one, I'm probably gonna go Batman versus Superman. Uh, just because I again I, I I like Ben Affleck um as Batman. I love him. Then, then I'm gonna go. Dark Knight Rises. I don't know why y'all hating on Dark Knight Rises. I love Dark- you. Loved it. Rip. Loved it. Uh, and then what's the next one? Batman Begins was trash to me. I'm sorry. I like yo. I hated Batman Begins. It was so. I hated it. It was so wet. You even. I, you didn't even like the twist of Ra's Al Ghul. Nobody saw that coming. No. no. You so know what? You know why? Because it's, Lee, it, it's Liam Neeson, and every time I just hear him, it's just like. I have a particular set of skills. So let me but that was I after. <laughs> I know, but now, now, I, after I saw that, it ruined it. Because all, <laughs> now all I think of is Raja Guru. I have a particular set of ninjas. <laughs> so you want to know why I hate Dark Knight Rises? And 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 this is it's funny because uh, in, I don't know if any of you guys watched the pitch meeting series, but they did one on the Dark Knight Rises. And he was like, so yeah, man, with this new Batman, we figured like it'd be really cool if we take his powers away and we see him become Batman again. Yeah. And then as soon as he become Batman again, he meets Bane. Bane break his back, take him out. Now he's no longer Batman. He got to become Batman again. And I said, yeah. right. so we yeah. just did the same thing twice back to back. Yeah, to yeah. You see, see, but see, you seeing it like that. What you got, what you got to see is, is when you lose white privilege, you mm. get on meth and you don't do nothing for seven years. Then you clean yourself up relapse and then you gotta get yourself <laughs> together again to be able to not save the city. Cause I was really done didn't. with that movie seven minutes in because no I'm sorry when they showed uh Christian Bale hobbling on a cane and they said he wasn't Batman for seven years. So you mean to tell me this billionaire who loves his city took a seven year break without <laughs> leaving anybody in his uh in his in his place to take care of the city, i.e., an older Robin or Nightwing well, or anybody. Well, to be fair, to be fair, they had said that the Dent Act was in effect, and that's what helped clean up the streets. So that's really what it was. It was just like, oh, yo, shit. you could you couldn't do anything. But like you said, how did that? But to your point, though, how would that take care of the other villains that are there? But two, like you said, they made that very realistic. Ah, and so, you and think this darkness is your ally? Yeah, like, yeah I'm like. You this GCPD really adopted was by far the dumbest GCPD. So you mean to tell me when you have a, a threat, you send the whole police force in the tunnel? Nobody, well, nobody well, hangs back. We send let's, everybody. Hold on, hangs let's back. let's think about let's think about this thing. <laughs> if if anything was true, it was to definitely show how dumb law enforcement was. Because the first thing was was said even on there, or perhaps he's wondering why someone would shoot tomorrow. Before throwing them out of the play, like, wait, dumbass, what, what, what did you think was gonna happen? Who was this supposed to be scaring? He didn't look, fly so well. So, I listening just, to your point, you said that the Dent Act is what cleaned up the city for seven years, right? So, you're telling me that Batman Begins happens, then the Dark Knight happens, where he arrests the Joker, and at the end of the movie, Two Face has now disappeared. Because he just, you know, got rid of him and he's really become Two-Faced. That after he runs out of the tunnel, Batman, he doesn't do anything. And crime (laughs) stops for seven years. That was the dumbest thing that I could have ever heard in that movie. Well, let's not not forget. 
we're sure the GCPD went back to what they normally do, and which is harassing people like us. So, you know, they probably were very busy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's why a lot of stuff wasn't happening. But like how you said, though, because of how grimy the city was portrayed, like that was an element missing. But again, since that wasn't the element he was going for, the the terrorist act that was made by Bane and then like the twist of like Talia Ghoul being there and stuff like that, it did have its hits. I mean, it did have its misses on certain things, but it's like there's so many parts in there that it's just like, yo, I will take that over bring in the ice. Everybody, chill, chill, <laughs> chill. No. Everybody, chill, chill. All of them ice pours. I was like, yo, I've never wanted to sock somebody in the yeah. face. A lot of ice so puns. So much. Like, all the ice puns. <laughs> right. And so, like, say, so, and then those are my bottom tier ones, like Batman and Robin, and then, uh, well, Batman Forever over Batman and Robin. Like, Jim Carrey, and he, even Tom Lee Jones he did what he could for Two-Face. Like, again, for an actor who don't know nothing about the character, and I'm sure they didn't give him no real backstory, he did, a, he did you know, an okay job playing Two-Face for what the story was. He was out of his own character, which I loved. Like, yeah, Tom Lee Jones is so serious yeah. so mm-hmm. to see him be if you take jim carrey out of that movie tommy lee jones was over the top yeah. yep yeah so that's what i loved about seeing that performance but also val kilmer was an amazing batman horrible bruce wayne and i don't know why they didn't dye his hair black that was another thing that pissed me no, off as a see, kid. That, see, see that's you me was the lips what the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> He was doing his best Michael Keaton with the liver, bro. You know, Michael hey, you Keaton. Hey, you don't have any. You don't have any. So it's just, and he kept looking up just. A lot of that's, pressure, man. That's that's what was killing me with, with his, the way his cow was. It was always this. Yeah. That okay, cow was loose as fuck at the top when they were and running. Was, no, his hair kept wiggling so much. <laughs> Oh, I would be able to take you seriously. I am was nice. loose as fuck, man. <laughs> He was running. <laughs> was like, oh, shit, what you about? Yo, okay, do you uh, like to end off with you? What, what would you rank your Batman? Um, uh, start off with a uh, Lego Batman, of course. You uh, wild as fuck. Hey, that's, hey, that's fucked up. That was a good movie. It was, it was good. good. Lego Batman. Like, we were Lego only Batman talking about the. Yeah, I'm joking with you. I'm joking. With you. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna start off with uh, Dark Knight. I wrote mine down because I'm because I don't want to do the whole uh, Dark Knight. Uh, I go with uh. Uh, Batman 2, what's the name of it? Uh, Batman, Returns. Batman Returns. Batman Returns. I'm gonna hit y'all with um, uh, Batman, and then uh, I'm gonna put the Batman there. Yep, um, then Batman, the first one. You just said that you have it on that mic. The Batman and then the original Batman. No, no, that's what I'm saying. If he just did his list and he wrote it down, the nigga said the Dark Knight. The nigga said Batman Returns. Then he said Batman. Then he said the Batman. And now he's saying Batman again. I'm listening to you. Did you? No, I, that's, that's, yeah. what I heard. that's literally what you said. Why are you quiet? Like we can't. <laughs> nah, I, 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 I had to like, think about it too. Did I you, you say Batman? Oh, uh, did you say like, Batman? Like, you said it? Yeah, like, like, did you say it for you said the Batman? I was like, wait, I, I, you got I, me I, thinking I, of it. I thought he was reading the list. What That's what I'm saying. I, I, I am. But I'm like, maybe I accidentally said it. <laughs> I'm I didn't hear that either. So I was like, wait, am I just people say, shut the fuck up? Let's just get past this, all right? I'm listening uh, to this thing. Here. Go ahead, bro. After Batman, I'll meet y'all with uh, Batman. And then, <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> the Dark Knight Rises. Um, and then um, Batman Forever. And then, oh, do we, do, y'all didn't say the, uh, any of the, the Justice, Justice Batman. That's a leak. No, I, I think Batman we were including just, those. Batman v Superman. We, we didn't say it in, at the Well, movie. we said, yeah, well, I said Batman Superman. I think yeah. I wanted them to. Yeah, I did too. I think I, 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 I didn't. I, I didn't yeah. I left it out right there. and I added it when they said it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, can't then, say Justice uh, League though, because that's a group movie. Yeah. And then lastly, uh, Batman and Robin. I love yeah, that man. we all agree that Batman and Robin was some bullshit. It was some bullshit. I was right a, from the jump. Right, a, from, right from the beginning, when they start 
showing the outfit and you say, wait, what is going on, yeah. dog? Like they when he had a bad card. credit card, I said, nigga, that was it. Get the fuck out of that here. had to be the greatest insult of all time. A fictional character got credit and a, a black card, by the way. He had a black card. They're like, you, 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 you are a vigilante who's supposed to be arrested and you got approved for an American Express? Bro, they they, <laughs> they, they, they made them, they made them uh, Russell Simmons and Master P. Remember when they came out with their credit card, the Rush card? They oh, made, yeah. It's, it's the Rush card, dog. Huh? Bro. <laughs> but only he had it and it was in the millions. The fact. <laughs> Look, <laughs> remember, we had to get to that. That motherfucker is the worst Batman of all time. He's the greatest Bruce Wayne of forever, but he's the worst, worst Batman of all time. Was that Val Kilmer or George Clooney? That was Clooney for that Batman Clooney. and Robin. Damn it, dude. And he yep, had yes. such a great record after that. Man. I know people, I know people were like, man, what the fuck you was doing? What were you, what what you thinking? thinking? Money. <laughs> Money. It was the 90s. No Batman. Like, See, this is what I'm talking about earlier when I said from 98 till like 2006, the CGI was bad and storytelling wasn't really helpful uh, for movies. For Batman in the 90s, after Batman um, Returns, Batman Forever still had the script that they were going to do for Tim Burton. They just altered it. Yep. So it's like, you got a good template here. Batman and Robin had no template. That was Schumacher doing what Schumacher wanted to do and yep. ruining it. So it was yeah. so much more of a comedy instead of a good right. film that it ruined the franchise for another 10 years. And it, and, it, and it set a course for people to be okay in Hollywood to go with, like, because Tim Burton, you know, Tim Burton does his research. So mm -hmm. he looked into the story. He depicted the story from what he saw in the comic books. And that's like how you even said, moving into Batman Forever, you still got a taste of that. Yeah. So that's why it wasn't as bad. But like you said, moving into Batman and Robin, you can see this became money grab. It's like, okay, yes. big names. Oh, yeah play this i'm not gonna look at where this comes from i just know this guy freezes this person can oh, kiss somebody about, it was all about merchandise if you Is remember it? during that time mcdonald's was doing stuff with batman and batman and robin they was they came out with all the toys the freeze gun like that's all that's why they went so campy they was like look we, we gonna we gonna get toys out of this we're gonna do deals with fast food companies it was all about that and not necessarily about the story we got to make it again. Didn't care about the merchandising as much. They just wanted mm -hmm. the story. They made yeah. people bend to their success. I remember the Batman video game came out uh, that was based off the movie. That's when a lot of uh, superhero movies were having video games that were based off yeah. the movie, yeah. and they were good. They yeah. were rushed, but they were good yeah. because it follows good. the movie story. Yeah. And you then you, you, know. you think if you was George Clooney, you think you get bought to do it? Like they was like, "Yo, uh, Will, I need for you to play." Uh, uh, Static Shock and CT, I need you to play Mr. Terrific. Uh, so would you be like, it's a great opportunity for me, or would you be like, I'm not gonna be set up for this because y'all ain't got no, like we shooting in two weeks. I gotta know the story. I gotta know, like, if I know this already, like, I gotta know first of all who's shooting this and let me talk to them. Well, like, first, okay, you think you I got the type of three power? months to get my Hell body. Yeah, if I'm playing Static Shock, <laughs> fuck yeah. I don't, I, I don't care. I don't care <laughs> what <laughs> level I'm like, at. Jesus. Like, you know, you gonna let me know something. Like, yo, if you don't know who the Bang Babies are, we got a problem. It's like, hey, we shooting in two weeks, man. Uh, you want to Listen, if you shoot in two weeks and you want me to play a superhero, I need you to shoot me chest up. They get all <laughs> right. Like, like, all what's that right? What's, and what's, your, and, and what's my static CGI de aging budget? Like, what's and, your de aging budget? Right. And my static <laughs> shot 10 years after, and um, <laughs> I got, you know, I start eating a lot. Like, we go on that route. <laughs> I can definitely play this. What's static shot? Oh, 17 year old in high school? <laughs> 17 year old in high school? Okay. Okay. <laughs> You gonna have a whole bunch of old testers this. like, yeah, I, I was supposed to play this character, man, but uh, I, I turned it down, man. You see how it turned out? You gonna you have to you gonna have them old ass stories. Michael Keaton had that story about uh Batman Forever and Batman That's and Robin. Right. He said he looked in the theater and was like, oh, I didn't miss anything. Yeah, <laughs> and every and yeah, and that really be just it. Yeah, some of them you just like yo, like if it's not a. Uh, especially if you know what it's about too, or just have a glimpse. Cause like, even like you telling us, like if I'm playing static shock, it's like, okay, how do you plan on carrying static shock? Yeah. And so, because then too, like that might be hurtful. In my break, case. Man. It is, it is, it is a big break, but also too, for myself. And this is just, like, I can't speak for nobody else. Like it's all about the quality for me, not the quantity. Oh, yeah. Like, well, you, know, that's like what that... I say. you say, you say it's a big break, but it can also be detrimental because look what Ryan Reynolds had to do to get another shot. 
You know what I'm saying? Like when he when he was when he was Green Lantern, like that was a stain because of how bad it was. Mm -hmm. And like so it could it could it could potentially impede on like your progress because of that. So it's like, yeah, it's a big name movie, but like if this quality is bad or this story is bad, I don't want to be synonymous with Oh yeah, that's the bad Batman. Like you oh, could yeah. be the Lone Ranger guy. He didn't yeah. get no opportunity. <laughs> what happened to the dude that plays Cyborg? Is he doing anything right now, Ryan Fisher? Besides running his mouth, no, and Ray nope. Fisher. Ray so Fisher, here's the yeah. thing: I'll say for that role, um, Green Lantern, that movie could have been solved in three things: one, if they gave him an actual suit with white gloves; two if they had actually had a physical villain for him to fight instead of Hector Hammond and the uh, the cloud villain yeah. of Parallax. If they would have made Parallax an actual being that he could fight, it would have been a success. And the third thing is if they would have slowed the movie down pacing. See, yes. the, the problem with Green Lantern, because I watched it a week ago, the problem with Green Lantern <laughs> wasn't, no, because it was on Netflix. The problem with Green Lantern wasn't that it was a bad movie, it was that it suffered in comparison to how good Thor was. So Thor came out the exact same year and they focused on right, building right. Asgard and they had him on Earth and it made sense. With the Green Lantern movie, they had this motherfucker going back and forth from Oa to Earth like it was just a bus stop ride. And it made <laughs> no transitional sense yeah. on what was actually going on. You get this magical ring. You don't want to do anything about it. They suck you up to Oa. Oh, as soon as you get there, you're like, oh, what's all this? Oh, I got training for like two hours and I'm going back to Earth. I got to talk to some friends. And then you go back. to It was just too, yeah, it was, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I, I'm very surprised that that's where you started with the fuck up. So you just yeah, the forgot about the first problem. So no, you just going to forget about X-Men Origins. We just, we oh. just go, we go act like Ryan Reynolds didn't, didn't just go, hey, we got you playing this assassin character with Hugh Jackman and Wolverine and the films in two weeks. You in? Yes. Yes. That is what can happen when you just accept. It's a big opportunity. That wasn't his fault. That was <laughs> the fault of uh, the writing because that's not how Deadpool is supposed to be constructed. But again, it's a big opportunity. <laughs> and he fixed weeks. it. He parlayed that into a way better Deadpool. He never would have been able to get the Deadpool that we have now if he hadn't been in X-Men Origins. Which is true. Which is true. Because yeah, he wouldn't have... That's he when he fell in love with, the, yeah, because that's when he fell in love with the character, and mm -hmm. but he, but he, but again, he had to take it in his own hands. And like I said, it was, it was detrimental. People were like, all right, fuck it, we can't, we can't do it. And so it's like, and like I said, it's like you gotta, like I get it, it being in a huge opportunity, but I, I, I think because I'm such a fan of the source material, I definitely would have so much questions that they probably would kick me off, like. All right, we can't work with Deuces because he mm. he challenging everything. But I'm like, yo, that's not like like I'm gonna have mad questions with the director. Like, fam, why you got me doing this? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. So yeah. you gotta watch out for that. Yeah, you do, and so you know, hopefully that uh, they they continue to think of that like as they move towards, like I said, with the Batman uh, franchise just on the DC big side, and then also too this Matt Reeves version. So, yeah. um, but again, we I, like we said, we we love where they're starting off at as far as like characters go. Batman, uh, Robert Pattinson is growing on us and stuff. Bruce, his Bruce Wayne could definitely catch a little bit. But of course, though, you know, we definitely want to know what y'all think. So we want to let y'all know. For Thank you for joining us here on the Strand of a Comic Book Show. Of course, Young Do CT and Dion Lack, thank y'all for joining me today. Uh, of course, another another extended episode. And that's why I love these, because we go deep into it. We dive in. We go even to other places and stuff. And folks love that. And so, like, just like us, we can't wait to see what's next for Batman. But um, before we go, I always like... Uh, my guests to shout out what they got coming up. So I want to start with, of uh, course, Young Dude, CT, then Dion, and then we are going to go ahead and call it another great episode. Young Deuce, you have the floor. All right, man. What? Well, thank you again for having me, man. I told, I, I told you I, I truly appreciate being a part of these panels, man, and just being able to deep dive into the stuff that we love. If you guys want to follow me, man, it's Young underscore Deuces everywhere or at Geek Set Podcast. Um, I don't... By the time this air, my interview, I put I'm putting out an interview with uh, Jordan L. Jones, aka the he's the new jazz in, the, in Bel Air. Um, hey. you know what I'm saying? So like that should be out. Also, you know, if you haven't checked it, man, I interviewed Kadeem Hardison, 
amazing episode that's out man that's been really dope um that episode this season has been I, i've been talking to a lot of legends man i've got a chance to talk to kel mitchell i talked to cedric yarrow i talked to kadeem hardison um and all of those episodes are out so you know go to youtube.com backslash geek set podcast watch those interviews man because they're really dope and if you haven't one of the biggest things that i'm trying to make sure that i amplify for black history month i know it's past but i did reach out to over 30 blurs and i asked them three questions i asked them what does black history month mean to you uh what makes you proud to be black and black uh, black history month plus blurred culture what's the first thing that comes to mind and the conversations that i had with people were so dope and it was what was really dope about it was it was, this is 30 blurs across the world. And though we all have different walks of life, there was so much similarities to how we were taught Black History Month and the things that we connect with and how our upbringing was with it. And I'm really, really big on making sure that I can amplify other people's voices. And because there were 30 plus blurs on there from all walks of life saying some dope stuff, I hope that people watch these videos, see something that they like from some of these creators and go follow them. So when you go to the video within the description, it has all, it has everybody involved in the video, all their at information so you can follow them. But I really wanna get more eyes on that video because it was such an important piece. And I thought it was really dope to do something for the culture by the culture. We see so many white companies who pander <laughs> during Black History Month, reach out to creators and be like, okay, let's do something for Black History Month. And then they don't work with them ever again. I'm changing that. I said, you know what, let me take that. I'm going to do that with Geek Set. I'm going to put together this BuzzFeed style video about Black History Month, but it's for us. But then throughout the years, I'm also going to be collaborating with all the people that you see in the video. So I just want to make sure we amplify that and show that show that team, you know, mentality and everything like that. So yeah, go to youtube.com backslash geek set podcast. That's where all of the information is with all the videos. And thank you guys again. Man, I wish you <clears throat> nothing but success continuously. I remember you posted in the group chat and I was like, hey man, not in the group chat, man. Send us this yeah. shit separate. And you never sent it separately because I was like, oh man, I wish I would have known. <laughs> oh, I, like, I, see, I missed that part. I, when I yeah. saw that, I was like, dang it, I want, I, 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 like, you know, in my head, I'm like, yeah. in, in my Dang it, no, remember, that's why I was like, yo, send it to him, because you sent it to yeah. me, and I was like, yo, send it to him. In my, so. in, my <laughs> head, I'm, in my head, I'm I'm the newbie. I feel like in my head, I'm still, I'm still in training, where y'all trying to figure out, like, is dudes cool or not? So I was like, when you said that, I was like, damn, I'm about to get kicked out the group chat. No. Like, yeah. like, Here's the funny like, thing. <laughs> you would never get kicked out the group chat. It's just like, because I'll tell you, because I got another group chat uh, on my IG. It's the Team CT all day, right? Where I got, yeah. like, a lot of the members of the squad in there. And I tell them all, I'm like, yo, this is for us to send each other memes yeah. and say some wild, funny shit. But no, like one, like one dude was like, "Yo, y'all, join my Discord." I said, "Hey, man, this ain't this ain't for that. If anything, it's gonna be CT news in this bitch. You understand?" <laughs> but nobody promoting. And then another cat tried to promote, and I was like, "Look," and I had to end the group, and yeah. I had to form another group because you know when it's so many people in that group, you know, um, just to say it lightly, you know, a lot of people might not have a lot of followers right so they see a lot of numbers in the group and they're like i'm about to just promote to these people and it's like that's not what this is for so yeah. with this group that we're all in i was like i i'm so uh shell shocked from that i'm like no 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 please please yeah. no advertisements here just send it to me separately which anything that you ever want me to rock on send it to me separately i'm in but i thought like every time i see y'all names pop up in the group chat i think i'm about to get some brand new superhero news so yeah. i'm like oh shit and then i open it up and it's like hey guys i'm like god damn it <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, it's, it's just me in my head like i'm, in, I'm like oh shit dog he about to, he about to kick me out they nah, like, nah, nah, deuce nah. is wild like no nah. <laughs> literally deuce is wild, <laughs> deuce is wild. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah ct you up uh hey man um ct is dope on everything you just type that in Dion lack fresh off the birthday the hey, big four oh yes, happy sir. birthday hey, look. <laughs> <laughs> the timing <bro. laughs> and it's off. I, I apologize i apologize you're the goat bro video went off uh first things first goat. um Thank y'all, man, uh, for including your boy. We should call ourselves the, uh, you know, the laxative, black laxatives, you know, because we don't hold back shit. I like to call um, back. 
<laughs> um, I of uh, uh, right now um, have two podcasts. Uh, one with Chasmin Rogers called Lacaroni and Chaz, and I have another one called Random Ass Conversations with Twills. Um, and I got two studios in Los Angeles. You're more than welcome to come by and shoot interviews, movies, TV shows, uh, photo shoots, anything you want have a piano here you know portray a music video um yeah that's it man yes indeed, yes indeed um you can also go to him if you are trying to become a potential superhero on how to undress quickly and put on your costume because oh you don't sure. even know oh man <laughs> i'm telling you if he pop back up in two seconds and he fully dressed i don't know what the hell's going on i don't know what's going on no i don't but of course, y'all already know. Follow me everything at Will Farrow. That's P H R A O H. Uh, you can check out on my YouTube channel. I have Farrow's Vault. Of course, here straight out of a comic book, and as well as Arcade Tokens, All Dev Cannabis, and All Dev Gaming. You can check me out there as well. But we want to thank y'all for tuning in for another episode of Straight Out of Comic Book. Make sure you like and subscribe, and then let us know how did you feel about the Batman movie okay try to keep the spoilers to a minimum and stuff but feel free to talk about it in the comments below and we will catch you next time okay oh. oh. to the loop <laughs>